Yes, Lord. Verse 23 talks about the molten sea. It says, He made a molten sea, ten cubits from the one broom to the other. It was round all about, and its height was five cubits. A line of thirty cubits did compass round about, and under the brim of it, round about there were knots compassing it, ten and cubit compassing the sea round about. The knots were cast in two rows when it was cast, and it stood upon twelve oxen looking toward the north, three looked toward the west, three looking toward the south, three looking toward the east, and the sea was set above them all. Upon them all, all their hinder parts were inward, and it was in the hand, it was a hand breath thick. The brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies, and it contained 2,000 baths. All right, I'm going to stop there. Now, this, what this molten sea is, it's a big brass washing labor. It replaces the, the labor of washing that was in the, that when we did the, uh, when we did the tabernacle, it replaced the labor of washing. This was a gigantic basin that, that, that Solomon had made. Uh, now, uh, it was a huge pool in the temple. It was one cast. Dakes it says it was 20 foot round from the basin to the brim and 10 foot high. With two rows of knops. Now, the word knops there, I really didn't know what knops were. Uh, Hebrew says pekayim, and what it is is the is I spoke about it before. It's the wild cucumber. Is what a knop is. It's the flower that comes off a wild cucumber. Cucumber flowers have really, I mean, cucumber plants have really pretty flowers. Very, very pretty flowers. We, we just grew some last year, and we had lots of light, yellow, beautiful flowers. And these are the knops that they would they were cast into the metal all around it. A gigantic bowl was placed upon 12 brass oxen. Three of them were facing north, and three of them were facing west, and three were facing south, and three were facing east. The first passing the pillars of grace, you face the need for washing. And it's held up by a trinity of oxen. A trinity of workers that held you up. Because guess what we wash when we wash in the labor? We wash the sin off our bodies. We wash the blood off of it that was shed for our for our sins. Amen. And uh, this is this was the symbolizing of of a new life. Uh, of, of before you can go into the holy of holies, you have to come past the, the the brazen altar where there's a trinity of oxen facing every direction with strength. Uh, this this tub was filled with Dex says two thousand baths. Well, it says it in the, in the, in the King James, but uh, he, he says that sixteen thousand seven hundred fifty gallons. Some other versions say eleven thousand gallons. Wow, that's huge. Still, a lot of gallons of water to have to fill. You want to pay that water bill? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> how, and how would you like to get the water into the basin? Because they didn't have running water inside. That's what I was thinking. Or it's pumps like, uh -huh. either. Or pumps. No, it's all gravity type stuff they had back then. You know, taking it out. When they dug a well, they hoped the water come up. Yeah. You know, or they had to go get it. Uh, and the bowl was cast with those lily flowers, those those knots all around the top, symbolizing the cleansing and new life coming through when you come through the, the brazen altar. Verse twenty-seven. More works of brass. He made ten brass bases. Four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits of the length of the other. Three cubits the height thereof. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges. And on the borders that were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and cherubims. And upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions, oxen, were certain additions made of thin work. And every base had four brazen wheels and plates of brass. Four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the labor were undersetters, molten at the side of every addition. And the mouth of it within the chapter, and above it was a cubit. But the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base. And the cubit and half, and also upon the mouth of it were gravings with their borders, four square, not round. Under the borders were four wheels, and the 
the axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base, and the height of the wheel was a cubit and one half a cubit. And the work of the wheels was like the work of the chariot wheel. And there were axle trees, and their names, and their fellows, and their spokes were all molten. And there were four undersetters to the four corners of the one base, and the undersetters to the four corners of one base. And the undersetters were of the very base itself. And the top of the base, there was a round compass of half a cubit high, and on the top of the base, the ledges thereof, and the borders thereof, were of the same. For the plates of the ledges thereof, and the borders thereof, he graved cherubims, lions, palm trees, according to the proportion of every one, and the additions round about. After this manner, he made ten bases, all of them had one casting, one measure, and one side. Okay, I know that's a lot of reading. Hiram was really talented. He was very, very talented. And I, 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 would, I like to see replicas of these. I know we've, I've looked them up on the internet before. Uh, but I would I, I like to put myself there to see what this was like. I mean, and he were, I mean, this was all done by hand. And when you read this in King James, it's a little confusing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I didn't interpret it real good. No. I, 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 I'm reading my new living translation. I, I think it was better in, in the Hebrew than it was in the King Probably, James. Yeah. Uh, basically, what they made here, we're talking about, they made four, they made ten water carts. Okay? And you've yeah. got to realize, when they're sacrificing tens of thousands of animals, it creates a lot of blood. Yeah. Lots of blood and lots of fat, we find out later on. Too much fat. Mine says they were six feet long, six feet wide, and four and a half feet tall. That's what I have here, too. Uh, the brass carts were built of frames. Between the frames were statues of lions. Okay, check this out. Well, in the Bible, though, Joyce, lions are the symbol of what? Or, for anything, lions, symbol of what? Strength. Strength. And we also know that Jesus is the Lion of Judah. Right? So we have the, the, at, the, at these water carts, you know, uh, we need watering sometimes. You know, the Holy Ghost needs to give us some watering. Amen. Uh, and then, also between these frames were oxen. And we said that lions are the, are, the, are the symbol of strength. And oxen... Power. Absolutely. Workhorses. They're power. So you got you got strength, and then you have power. The oxen represent the power. Cherubims are what? Angels. They're angels that watch over us and bring us messages, because that's what they are. They're heavenly messengers to speak to us. I guarantee you, when you read your Bible and you see the light shine on the pages, on the words, there's an angel behind you pointing at it. Amen. Saying, look, there it is. That's what I, that's what God wants you to read today. Pay attention. <laughs> yeah. And the wreaths around the around these uh, these frames were checkered with gold hangings round about. Each water cart had four brass wheels with brass axles, all held together by brass supports. The top of the vessels had an opening 18 inches wide. The base holding the vessel was 27 inches wide, ornately carved, and the frame was square and not round. Because you, you see you have round, uh, the big the big pot, the, right. the molten sea was round, but these are square, uh, uh, cor uh, squared off on the edges. They're not round carts. Okay, um, in fact, the word round uh, in Hebrew is uh, agol, verse 35, and it means circular or to revolve. Okay, agol, please spell for me. A-G-O-L, agol, means round. And then I also noticed something that said that they had a round compass. And I thought maybe that was a compass, maybe like with the, with the, how the Masons use a compass and some of their symbolism. But this is not that. Uh, round compass means, the word compass is sabid. It means on every side. It was round on every side. Okay, kabib. Comp compass. Sabid? Yes, sabid. S-A-B-I-B -B means to go on every side of something. Okay, so that's one of those. I am so sorry. S I B. S A B I B. Sabid. Thank you. And it means round on every side. <clears throat> uh, nine inch bands going around the vessel, all made of one piece. On the border, Solomon had Hiram carved cherubims, angels praising God, lions, the lion of Judah, palm trees, which are the symbol of new life in the desert. 
right? Yes. And then these were to be round about the cart. All right. And then finally, verse 37. He made water carts from one cast. Every one of them was the same from the same cast. So this was molten metal that he would pour into molds. Yeah. You know? I mean, and, even that, that takes a lot. I mean, it's one thing to be able to hand carve each one, but to be able to make a cast. Yes. and Because then you have to mach and they had machine to be, it. Yeah, there's no such thing as machining back there. It was all yeah, by hand. It never had to be, yeah. You know? So, yeah, it, this was quite an undertaking. Uh, now, they, 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 these labors mentioned in verse 38. We hadn't got there yet. Right. Utensils of brass. Let's read this. Then he made ten labors of brass, one labor containing ten forty baths, and every labor was four cubits upon every one on the ten bases of the labor. And he put five bases on the right side of the house and five on the left side of the house. And he set the sea on the right side of the house eastward over against the south. And Hiram made the labors and the shovels and the basons. So Hiram made an end of all, doing all the work that he had made King Solomon for the house of the Lord. Pete, you had told us how many years it took him to do this. How? Well, can you please remind me? Did, he, uh, did you say... I have it in my notes. I believe that it was 20... What does it say? Seven years. Seven, seven years. It was seven years, wasn't it? I, I should remember these things. You guys no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. Because I wrote... Well, I didn't remember it. And I, yeah, I wrote it in my fine notes. that I have those notes. Those, those are correct notes. Okay. Yeah, okay. It, Solomon's house was 13 years. And... I want to say that you seven. seven. Yeah, because years. it was 20 total. 20 total, 13 and yeah. 7 make 20. So, so it's 7 20. years for the house of the Lord and then 12 years for his own. And I remember we said why it took more long because he also made a palace for his queen from Egypt. <laughs> his Egyptian, <laughs> he's a, his Egyptian queen. Yeah, his Egyptian queen. <laughs> okay, um, these... these uh, Labors. I, I like the, I like when I looked up the word uh, labor. It was different than the water carts. These labors sat on the water carts. Right. Okay. The carts. These these labors sat on the water carts, and they are. Uh, the word is ryor. R i y y o r, and it means a cauldron. And I and I, I can relate to what a cauldron is, or maybe a black right. pot. Right. You know, when I when I first started doing fried turkeys, we did them in a black iron pot. And uh, we don't do them in a black iron pot no more because one thing, you can't even find a black iron pot. If you do find it at the, at the first Monday, it's got a crack in it, and they want 500 bucks for it. Uh, but, uh, so these black, black pots were put on the, on the water carts, these cauldrons. Uh, each one of them, uh, there were 10 of them, and each one held 220 gallons. That's what I have, 220 gallons. Can you imagine? Yeah, these were heavy things. Because, I mean, if you compare to, I mean, a pound is, e I mean, one gallon is equal to roughly about seven pounds. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine seven times 200, just for one, not all ten. And you had to fill those things. Yes. And you had to replace the water room because the water got filled. Dirty, up. yeah, you have to, you, not only do you have to unload it, you have to unload it. <laughs> yeah. So they had set five cauldrons on the right side of the temple and five on the left side. He put the sea of brass that's the pool of washings on the right side toward the south east. And then it says, I unfinished finished the work, verse 40, making labors, shovels, shovels and molds. Yes, shovels, uh, which is the, the root word of shovel is ya, which means to sweep away or brush aside. Uh, it was for the ashes that was created from the sacrifices, okay? These shovels. And then they had uh, basons, and I looked up that word, it's Mizrak, uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, M-I-Z-R-A-Q, sprinkling bowls. Yeah. Hiram completed all the molten castings and the metal work for the king Solomon required to complete the temple of the Lord and his own dwelling place as well. In verse 41, they have a recap. Yep. Okay? Let's see... The interesting fact sheet. I have an interesting fact sheet. Oh, I want one. Right here. If y'all want a copy of this, I'll have to get you one. I only made one copy. Okay. 
And I found this on the internet. Interesting facts about Solomon's temple. It was Israel's first temple. Israel had the temple for 400 years. David wanted to build a temple but was forbidden because he was a man of war. 1 Chronicles 22.8 David gave Solomon the architectural design for the temple. Actually, he got it from Nathan. I learned that from reading my Bible. David accumulated treasures and building materials for the building of the temple. 1 Chronicles 29.2-6 The cost of the temple in today's money is estimated to be equal to 3 to $6 billion. Boy. Solomon began construction of the temple 490 years after Israel came out of Egypt. 490? 490. 490 years after coming out of Egypt. And then it existed for 400 years. Isn't it funny because don't they have 400 pomegranates? Yes, they do. They have 400 pomegranates. We read about that. Maybe that has something to do with these 400 years. And they would have done 401 pomegranates? Could they, they have had 400? Well, I don't know. <laughs> this temple was located on Mount Moriah where Abraham had offered Isaac, Genesis 22.2. The temple was built of great stone, cedar beams, and boards overlaid with gold. The construction took seven years, which we just discussed that. <laughs> Dedication of the temple, 1 Kings 8, 26, 20, uh, 26 through 66. We haven't got to the dedication yet in our studies. Solomon offered up at this, uh, at this uh, time 220,000 oxen, 120,000 sheep, and a 14-day feast, which we're going to read about that later. The temple was built by 30,000 Israelites and 150,000 Canaanites, Phoenician artists and craftsmen from Tyre. The temple faced east and was built after the general place of the tabernacle, but twice the size, 90 feet long, 30 feet wide, 45 feet high. The temple itself, the most holy place, 60 foot long and 30 foot wide. The most holy place, the Holy of Holies, was 30 by 30. The most holy place was separated from the holy place by a veil. Furniture in the holy place, 1 Kings 6, 23 through 28, which we read. Golden altar of incense, five golden candlesticks on the north side, five golden candlesticks on the south side, five golden showbread on the north side, and five golden showbread on the south side. Furniture in the most holy place and the, was the Ark of the Covenant. The brazen altar was 30 feet square and 15 feet high, and the brazen laver, also called a sea, was 15 foot in diameter, 8 feet deep, and sat on 12 brazen oxen. Okay, fun facts. I like fun facts. Okay. How many Canaanites again? 150,000. So I, have, I assume that there was. Oh, never mind. Nope. Like, a lot of cheats. Okay, as we do our recap here in verse 41, there was two pillars, two bowls for the top caps, two networks of checkered gold lattice covered with covered the bowls on the top of the pillars. 400 pomegranates attached to the gold lattice. Two rows for each lattice, covering the bowls on the top of the pillars. Ten water carts with ten cauldrons. One molten reservoir of, or pool of brass held up by twelve brazen oxen. Also pots, and that word pots there in Hebrew is sirah. It means to boil or a flesh hook or a pan. Uh, they had shovels, basins, uh, sprinkling bowls. Everything that Hiram made was polished brass. Can you imagine? Check this out. Clay was found in the plains of Jordan, and a foundry was made there, because there was clay and sand was mined in a place called Sukkoth and Zaphani. It took several furnaces to produce the, mol produce the molten metals, to produce the final castings of the temple idols. They were so heavy but they decided not to weigh them. I bet you I didn't read those. Or did I? No. I mean, I was reading the same thing. Solomon did not weigh these things because there were so many, the weight of the bronze could not be measured. I mean, just think about how much lumber and everything they had to do to get it. I mean... And then getting those the, 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 the metal things from the foundry. Because you don't have a foundry inside of your city. No. I mean, the, the people that had foundries inside of their city later on had met very, very bad problems with their cities in America. I mean, yeah. up north they had, to, they, had to, they had the river catch on fire. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because all the stuff they were putting Delicious. into the river. Yeah. You know, but you can't take uh, have these gigantic furnaces. These had to be pretty big. Yeah. 
to make a pillar that big, you had to have a gigantic furnace. I mean, this, you're right, and this is before factories, you know. This was a factory. Was somebody they had a factory out there, and I said, I said right there, they yeah. actually found in the plains of Jordan remnants of a foundry. And imagine? it could have been his. I mean, it could have been Hiram's foundry there. So, I think it's just amazing to study this. Uh, it is. And it's so symbolic. If you really get down to it, you know, it's very symbolic. It is, and it's probably even more symbolic than what I'm saying. Uh, tell you the truth. Okay, well, we let's could go. be here for hours and days and days. We could, and days. we could. Okay, let's 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 see if I can finish this. Um, verse forty-eight. Solomon made the vessels that retained pertained unto the house of the Lord: the altar of gold, the table of gold, where uh, whereupon the shoe bread was, candlesticks of pure gold, five on the right side, five on the left, before the oracle, with the flowers and the lamps and the tongs of gold. The bowls and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold. And the hinges of gold, both on the doors and on the inner house of the most holy place. And for the doors of the house to wit of the temple. So was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had de dedicated. Even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. And that's the end of chapter 7. Okay, so the summary of the golden works. We have an altar of God made out of gold. Right. A table of shoe bread made out of gold. We have ten candlesticks all made out of one piece of gold. In the oracle, the oracle, uh, for if you want to know the Hebrew word for oracle, it's debir, D-E-B-I-R, and it means a shrine or the innermost sanctuary. The most they had tongs. They had golden tongs that were flesh hooks for, for picking up the, 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 the sacrifices that were cooked. They had spoons. They had censers for incense to hold the incense. And other golden items included the hinges on the doors and the most holy place. All the work was complete. Solomon had completed building the place that God would dwell on earth. David had gathered and consecrated a mass of wealth and resources to build this great house of God. He gathered silver, gold, precious vessels, furnishings. were all placed in the temple according to David's wishes. Now, this is the question. Now that the temple is built, what is Solomon going to do? Oh, this is amazing. So, Joyce, would you pass out the outline for... This time I remembered to pass the outline before I start teaching it. Uh, <laughs> chapter 8 and 9 uh, is our outline that she's passing out. And we're going to find out what Solomon does and how his life can impact our lives today. So, uh, God bless. That's the end of this lesson this week.